Hey chatters, welcome back. We're gonna continue on with GitHub. We're not gonna actually be in GitHub for this one because we need to think conceptually about how kind of GitHub works in terms of sharing things and changing things and whatever. It can get very confusing. So I just wanna walk through the process. There's tons of resources online. Just Google or Perplexity or just ask ChatGPT these things, but I was hoping a quick little visual would help you understand how it works when you're making changes in, in GitHub. This becomes a lot more important when we actually get to the coding part, but it's really important to understand up front how all this works so you can understand later on when we're actually doing it. There's a few things we want to know here, or, or three things we need to keep in mind. We have our project, which is represented by this folder over here. We have this liminal space, this in-between space of when you're getting ready to push something into the cloud. And then there's the cloud itself, which is where GitHub is hosted. So let's say we're working on a project, okay? And we're making some changes and it's looking good. The first thing you're going to do is you need to stage it, okay? And all this means is you're putting it into the queue of changes that you're going to make and save. This is very important because I think we've all been there maybe when we've made a change that we didn't actually want and then it became annoying to go back and change that. So this is just marking off, okay, this thing is ready to go, but it doesn't actually push anything yet. This is especially important in code when you might have multiple files going on. You might want to be committing a change to one but not to another. So this is just a way to separate that out. Okay, once it's staged, it's going to be held in this little space where it's getting ready to be committed. I know some of you might be afraid of commitment, but this is what we're going to have to do if we want to push this up into the cloud where GitHub is, which when you're ready, again, this is the fail safe so that you have to take an additional action to push something so it's less likely you're going to screw it up. So after something has been staged, then committed, you can sync those changes and you'll do a push and probably a pull as well. But what the push does is all you're doing is you're moving those changes and merging them with what's called the main branch. Okay. So then now, now it's up in the cloud. It's all good. It's on back on GitHub online if you need to check it out or make changes there. And then let's say you're making changes in GitHub directly instead of wherever you might be hosting it on your computer and you want to bring those changes over to your main project, then you just do a pull request. Now, there's a little bit more in here. Uh, for one, uh, there's like a different version of pull, we'll call it, which is cloning a repo. So we had talked about in the last video where you might go out and find other people's awesome code to incorporate with yours. And so you might want to use their code as that jumping off point to start doing whatever you want with your code. So there's something called cloning a repo, which for those open source or public repos, you can find, but also if you're invited to a private repo, you can do. But all that is a fancy word for pull, but instead of pulling from your repo and any changes that might be happening, you're just pulling whatever that repo is wholesale into onto your computer or wherever you're hosting it. There's also things like forking, all that means is that, let's say, you have your main branch again, which you're pushing to, but you're going off on this little adventure, off on this side idea you wanted to explore, but might not work out, but you don't really want to mess up the main code. You can just do something called branching, which takes that main repo and just makes a little branch of it so that you can go off in that direction, but not harm or mess up this main branch. So you're probably not going to be doing that too much in the beginning anyway, but it's something to know. And that way, when you're making those changes, you're not interrupting anything. And you can always merge those changes later on. So we're not going to get too much into those because, again, in the beginning here, you're not really going to use them. But it is very important to understand the basics here of how this is going to work because otherwise you're going to get a little confused. And to be honest with you, I'm still a little bit confused. Sometimes when I'm running these things and it gets even more confusing when you start working with other people. But for now, all you got to understand is you're going to have your project probably locally somewhere on your computer. When you make changes to that, nothing's going to happen until you stage it. 
Staging it is just putting it into that queue. Then you hit commit and that'll set up the syncing opportunity and push those changes to the main repo in the cloud. And then if you wanna make changes in the cloud, you can always pull those changes into your project to merge them. I hope that helps you in terms of thinking about all these confusing words and things. Again, it does get a little more complicated than this, but as you're first starting out, this is all you really need to know. This cycle of pushing and pulling and having these steps in between of making sure you're not making a mistake by having to stage and commit it before you actually make those changes. So thanks chatters, play around with this uh, a little bit if you want. At this point, you're not really gonna have to because we haven't actually gotten to the coding yet. And you can always download the desktop app as well if you wanna kind of mess around in there and, and see what happens. But this is how it's gonna work. And so I think we're just about ready to actually get to the coding before we're, we'll have to come back to GitHub in a little bit. But for now, this is enough for you to get started. So as always, thanks for listening, chatters, and let's get to coding.